All right. So first things first, Cassidy, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm not too bad at all. Uh, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Absolutely. Anytime. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, no worries. So where I would like to begin is that I went during my research, I went uh, through your Instagram page and there was this picture of uh, your father and you and you must have been around six or seven or something. What do you remember yeah. of the little girl that you were uh, and, and kind of seeing what your father was doing in music? Yeah, well, I was always around music. I feel like since I, I came out of the womb, <laughs> basically, <laughs> I've been um, my my life has really revolved around music. And um, I, I loved listening to um, like hard rock artists as a kid. My dad raised me on that kind of music. And in no way did he say you have to listen to this. But um, it was something that I kind of um, really enjoyed from a young age. So I was brought up on your classics like Ronnie James Dio and okay. um, Pat Benatar and um, Lita Ford and Ozzy Osbourne and things like that. Um, so I, I really um, kind of had a soft spot for it from a really young age. But um, in regards to music and how I got into it more so is my dad has been in a band since, um, well, he's been in a band for his entire life. And um, I kind of... Uh, you know, was always around that growing up. I went to his shows and I remember, um, it's funny because I'm staying at the Hard Rock Hotel at the moment, but I remember going to um, Hard Rock Cafe in Melbourne and watching my dad play with his band when I was a kid. And um, I remember going away on trips with him, like when he did festivals in Chicago and things as a kid. So I was always around it. And, I, you know, I basically expressed an interest to my dad and I said hey this is something I really want to do I I knew how to play the guitar he had taught me guitar when I was um I think five or six years old okay. I started learning guitar but um after that I really took an interest in vocals and um like I said I I grew up with all those you know powerful females and rock and they're very inspiring to me um now and and before when I was younger so that's kind of how I developed an interest for it was there one song that you kind of loved when you were really young and then kind of later on figured out what it was about oh man um I feel like I've, I've I've loved so many songs when I was when I was a youngster but um Rainbow in the Dark Dio okay. it was a huge one for for me and um my, my dad is a huge Ronnie James Dio fan um huge Black Sabbath fan as well so mm. um to, to be able to um kind of share that with him even now and you know talk about him and um obviously uh commemorate his life and um speak about him and watch him because um I I never got to see him live and um but I'll always watch videos and things like that and um kind of just learn from everything that I can because he was such a great and um his legacy will live on forever so I'll I'll say that one that was a huge um a huge song for me Sure. And you mentioned uh, the other influences uh, were all these uh, female uh, rock and roll uh, people mm -hmm. like jo Joan Jett and the list goes on. But was that important to see for you that women were doing that as well? Absolutely. Um, I feel like the, the first, obviously Joan Jett was a huge one for me. Lita Ford was a huge one for me. Mm -hmm. But um, something that kind of just um, changed my opinion on women in rock um, in this uh obviously day and age was um, my favorite band, one of my favorite bands and continues to be one of my favorite bands ever is Hailstorm. And obviously that's fronted by Lizzie Hale and she is absolutely incredible. I remember, um, so I'm only, I just turned 21, so I, I'm not too old <laughs> yet, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I remember when I was like 14 and 15, everyone was like asked to like make a poster of their favorite band. And I rocked up with like this massive, my dad helped me draw it out, massive guitar, um, Lizzie Hale uh, guitar. And um, yeah, that, that was one of my my favorite memories of, you know, and, and people had no idea who Hailstorm <laughs> were in my class, but I did not care. Um, I was I was teaching them the right ways. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a very interesting point, I think, because at that age, and especially in this generation, that isn't the first thing that uh, children gravitate towards. So what was it like, kind of, your peers were listening, I, I suppose, to to what most kids are listening to, whatever's popular at the moment. So what was that like, yeah. you, you going into this kind of rock and roll uh, scene, and then kind of the other kids just doing what, what they were doing? How, how did you balance those two worlds? 
Um, it wasn't it wasn't really an easy thing for me to do, but I think it kind of came naturally in a way as well. Um, probably not the best answer, but it, it at times it was difficult for me to understand why. Um, and I did get bullied quite a little bit in high okay. school. Um, which I'll t- touch on more after, but um, for for liking that style of music and for being a female that wanted to do that and for a female that, that you know kind of wanted to change the way that you know young young kids think about rock music and um but yeah I feel like in a way I kind of well in many ways I've owned it in in the best way I could possibly do and um like I said I I rocked up to school and I I had no shame like I I I loved I and I still love Hailstorm um they were they had a huge impact on me in um in ways of songwriting and obviously she's an incredible front woman as well an incredible vocalist so I've learned so much from her but yeah, I feel like that's probably um, the thing with me is that I I'm kind of unapologetically me, and um, you know that's that's a that's a big thing that I kind of carry into my songwriting and um, my performance. I feel like. Oh, that's great to hear, and and I've had the pleasure to talk with Lizzie uh, on a couple of occasions, and they're lovely people as well. So I just she wanted is. to add that. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You mentioned that I think I. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, I did write it down. Metalheads against bullying. You you mentioned yeah. this. Uh, so so was that kind of a, a passion thing for you that you kind of going through some of it yourself that you kind of wanted to help uh, kids going through the same thing? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I think for me, Metalheads Against Bullying was about kind of sharing my story. Um, and I it was like I said, it was there were times where I came home and I just I purely could not understand why people would be so mean like I I just my I was raised in a a household that celebrated everything that's different about people and you know applauded that and championed that whereas like when you go to school and and high school in particular because I had a really good primary school experience um, I feel like it was kind of an eye-opener to me that you know everyone's not always going to be supportive of what you want to do and you just kind of need to um keep your your head up high and um like I said be unapologetically you um in order to to get somewhere with what you want to do because I couldn't imagine anything worse than someone holding you back from what you wanted to do and I feel like with sharing my story it's um even if I have helped one person and people write to me all the time about their experiences with bullying and say that your story helped me overcome that and that's just the best thing as um not even as an artist but as a person as well to be able to help um others kind of get through what they're going through because it's not an easy journey and it's um it's not an easy thing to digest either I can imagine that music uh, at points then was an escape as well. That it was something like a refuge where you, where you could just float away. And uh, so yeah, yeah. That, that period from, you mentioned 14 years old, I, I think that's when the uh, talk about it, uh, you released talk about it, right? Yeah, exactly. It was actually exactly when I released talk about it. This okay. all started to kind of unfold. Um, I released the song and um one of the really big positives is that online it was getting so much traction and it was getting such a good response and um this is the thing that I think kind of baffled me a little bit is that some people that hadn't even met me in person were Mm. so lovely and supportive to me about what I was what I wanted to do and the journey I wanted to go on but people that I had known my entire life were the complete opposite and just did a complete 360 um but yeah I I I got hassled heaps people used to mimic me people used to call me names um everything under the sun that you can think of in the way of bullying I I probably have experienced and um yeah it was it was difficult also for my parents because like I said, they're such um, happy-go-lucky people sure. and um, they always celebrate people's differences and want me to be unique and different and um, to see their kid come home from school crying and, you know, not understanding why people would be like that. It was also really difficult for them to understand. And the, the last thing, because I don't want to dwell on this, but what I find interesting because you also have a song called wannabe, which kind of goes into to yeah, people, yeah. people want to be famous and then kind of the superficiality of life and social media mm-hmm. is part of that as well, at, at least Absolutely. in my opinion. 
so but you, you, like I, I i was born when there was no social media so so i didn't grow up with it the way i think you have so was that <laughs> difficult because it's it's almost it feels like it's, that bullying is almost inherent to social media it is and a lot of the a lot of the things i experienced is that um it all went down on social media a lot of the time like I, I remember um my my management at the time had put up like Cassidy Paris posters all around um Australia so there were ones in Brisbane there were ones in Melbourne mm -hmm. um basically every state there were Cassidy Paris posters hanging around you will be able to spot some if you ever come to Australia there mm -hmm. are some still that are still lingering sure. um and my my the pe people in my inner circle always send me a photo and they're really happy when they see things like that oh, but cool. people that were in my class thought it was hilarious so they go and um destroy them or they'd you know um go and like post it on the social medias and you know um mimic me and um that was i, I just it's so funny because i feel like there are so many people in my in what is called like your basically what is called your senior year in Australia it's called year 12 sure. there were so many people that decided that they wanted to do music after that and they were the people that were giving me the hard time mm. um back in the day when I, I released talk about it and I wanted to do this so and they'll ask you for advice and stuff and I'm like I just don't understand how people can can be so I don't know it's just it's such a strange situation to be in where you know, like I'm always obviously the type of person that give people second chances and um, people the ability to kind of um, change their their ways. Mm. But it's it's kind of a hard thing to wrap your head around when people are hassling you and you cried so many tears over them. And then sure. um, obviously they're like, they've done a complete turn. So it's interesting, I guess. No, but I think it's very very awesome that you stuck with it and that that, that you didn't Thank let you. them discourage you and then, no I never mean, never i mean here we are you have an album out and it's been out for a couple of days so has, what, what are the feelings because that, that must have been a big milestone for you it was a huge milestone. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it was it was one of my favorite days ever um, releasing the album because I was reading. Um, well, so many people had messaged me and sent me lovely um, like DMs, and people were resharing saying how much they loved this song or how much they loved that song. And um, when it's obviously so personal to you as an artist as well, it just makes you feel um so full inside and I just feel like this album has been such a long time coming like we've been mm. working on a lot of the songs for like the past five years of my life which is a good chunk of like obviously it's all by adolescence and um well a bit of my adolescence and um my later teen years and obviously going into adult young adulthood as well so there's yeah. definitely growth in the music and there's growth in the songwriting and um growth even in the vocal abilities and stuff like that everything even um though they had some of them had been previously released like like I never loved you for instance um we just felt that that needed to be on the album and um there was discussions to put different songs on the album but I thought that it's so pivotal to my journey and that like like I never loved you I feel like is one of the strongest songs I've ever written and um so everything was re-recorded for the album but um yeah and then obviously re releasing songs that people had never heard before and they were just obsessed with so that was crazy as well um but the response has been insane like <laughs> I I wake up every single day with people writing to me about how much they're listening to it and um people <laughs> I re read this um thing on Facebook the other day and it said I've got the Cassie Paris albums and then I was like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> and it said one for my workplace, one for my car and one okay. for my home. And I think that is so cool. Like people <laughs> are that, um, you know, that passionate about music and it just helps such a young artist like myself. I couldn't be more thankful. Yeah, that's very, very cool. And I, I think as well, you, like you say, you definitely hear the progression from, uh, obviously you, you were only 14, 15, so it, it's natural that you still have a lot of room to grow, but you, you can really yeah. feel uh, where you've had it. And um, you mentioned uh, songwriting. So what, what I find interesting then, when did you start putting thoughts onto paper and has that always been a, been a big, uh, an important part of, of what you do? 
Yeah, it's always been an important part what I do um, of what I do because I feel like songwriting has always been that outlet for me for anything that I go through in my life. It's always it comes back to songwriting and um, kind of putting my thoughts on a paper and or like jotting it down in my phone a little bit more 21st century. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, but yeah, I I love songwriting so much and it just um it means the world to me that people are relating to the lyrics that I write and um I just feel like there are so many songs on the album that like I said are so personal to me so deeply personal and people are making them their own and it um the great thing about songwriting is that when you write the song and you don't really envision it having a life other than what mm. you went through personally and then obviously it grows a whole new meaning when someone else listening listens to it for the first time so that's that's very exciting to see how people are kind of relating to the tracks that I wrote which song lyrically gave you the biggest trouble and I'm, I kind of mean in the sense of you wanted to get it right so it, it was tricky to get it right Oh, good question. Great question. Searching for a Hero was a hard one for me, actually. Um, that's a song that I wrote um, by myself. And um, Searching for a Hero, it was kind of like when I was going through this time where um, I just, you know, I like it's kind of like searching for like meaning and searching for like this person to kind of inspire you. And um, when you're kind of in like a, a lull, I'll call it, um, so that one was kind of a difficult one for, for me to write, but once it was done, I was so happy with it because um, I feel like that's got such a huge meaning behind it. Mm. And um, I feel like a lot of people are really, really digging that one as well. So that's exciting. But um, the, the song that came the quickest to me, though, was definitely Danger. And okay. um, I I started off with this, like, this really cool riff and, it was like very different to what I had previously done. It was like very kind of like had a dark sense to it. And sure. um, I remember recording the riff and then um, everything just came so easily after that. Like some sometimes you get songs where you, you know, record a riff and then you can't just like work anything out. It sounds like um, melodically correct to your brain. But um, yeah, Danger was just like the easiest song for me to write ever. And I feel like because... I sat down where I was and I was like so annoyed with this this guy I was seeing at the time and um, that made it a lot easier to put my thoughts into um, into writing as well. Well, that, that would have been my question. Did you have a specific person in mind? So you did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, I feel like for, for artists, it's, it's so funny um, to kind of talk about the people that inspired the songs, but uh, I, I kind of believe that people that are on the record or when I say on the record, <laughs> the songs that I wrote about people that are on the record, they know who they are. And <laughs> I'm sure that their friends or friends of friends have told them about it and they've kind of pieced it together. So that's always <laughs> funny as well. Yeah, but as you say, that that also makes it very real and very personal to you. And... Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? If you reveal... I, I read this, I, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, but if you reveal exactly who you're speaking about, I feel like it just makes it exact. For, it makes it for the artist and not for the people sure. that you're writing for as well. And I want people to feel like it's theirs and um, because it is theirs and I did write it for them as well. And that's a that's an interesting element as well because you one of the kind of mission statements, if I can call it that, um, <laughs> that you have is kind of trying to inspire uh, young women to pick up uh, guitar and, yeah. and inspire them to yeah. listen to rock and roll music. And I saw this short little clip on I think it was on YouTube, where this this really young girl uh, popped up on stage with you and then just started jumping in ar around or something. So yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah, have you well, noticed that's... about? Oh, go ahead. No, 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 you go for it. What have I noticed? No, the kind of uh, ab about trying to inspire the younger generations. And then are they, I mean, they have so many distractions. I, I don't know how, how to, I wouldn't know how to be a kid in this this age. But um, yeah, what have you noticed from their response and their, their, their um, interest in playing an instrument? 
Yeah, well, I just think that there's been so many really cool stories that, like, I could share a million of them. Um, people, whether that whether it be their parents or you know young adults, like it, even when I was playing festivals, I just finished a UK tour, right. um, and when I was playing festivals or shows, and people would come up and they they just freshly turned eighteen, they said, "I've been listening to you since you wrote Talk About It," and you've inspired me to pick up a guitar. You inspired me to start songwriting and it's helped me so much through my journey over my adolescent years. And that's just the biggest compliment ever because it enables another person to, you know, to, to kind of hopefully take part in this, like this rock revolution. Um, and there's, there are a couple of like young, young um, rockers and females as well that are doing it at the moment. And, um, a lot of them I'm friends with, which I'm really grateful for, um, that are doing great things for the industry. And I feel like if everyone bands together, then this could really definitely work. And it, like, I already see glimpses of it, of it every single day, like that young girl or um, a lot of people will send me videos or um, because a lot of my shows are over 18 at the moment, um, mm. but I endeavor to change that. Um <laughs> Yeah, so people like buy T-shirts for their kids and um, send me videos of them jumping around to my song in their T-shirt and that's just super cute. So I, I love that aspect of music for sure. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I mean, obviously we're not there yet, but I, I've seen glimpses of, of uh, especially like the last six months, I've interviewed quite a, a bunch of female uh, mm. rock and roll or metal artists. So you do see yeah. them popping up more and more. So that's, I think that's a really good sign. Um, Absolutely. Last question. Where do you go from here then? Because, well, it's only been three days. I, I don't want to put too much pressure on you. But what, what is the what is your idea about what you want to do next? Well, ideas ideas are slowly turn, changing into plans, which is really exciting. <laughs> and we, like I said, it's been probably a week and a little bit since um, we finished the tour. And the tour was so successful in the UK. Um, people just packed out rooms every single night and, um, we played to we played at noon at festivals a lot of the time and people were like um, and a lot of the time we were openers as well and okay. people were like I seen line photos of lines people lined up for like ages um, to try and get into our shows and it was one in one out at shows it's you know that just that kind of thing blows my mind because I've been doing it for such a short time and um, the fact that people want to come out so early and listen to us play and um, speak to us after the show and kind of um, talk about their experience with the album or their connection with the music that we make is is a massive massive um, like compliment but yeah in regards to what we're, we're doing next um, live shows are like popping up like crazy and tour is touring is a huge thing for us in the next two years um, to to obviously um, get our names out there as much as we mm. can. And um, we've had a bunch of people contact us for tours um, internationally, which is extremely exciting. Um, and the UK want us back extremely so soon as well. So um, I'm very much looking forward to 2024 because there's a lot of um, things happening. And we have a very, very exciting show to announce in my hometown as well. So that's, that's exciting. That sounds great. You should come to the Netherlands as well. We, we would be yes well that's you. that's yeah i'll say yes at the moment because <laughs> um yeah that's something we're currently in discussion in very big discussions with okay. um yeah so europe is is looking like a a possible 24 plan so that's exciting that sounds great cassidy yeah. Maya, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me thank you so much i really appreciate it